Everyone, Storm Woman here. Today we'll be taking a look into a potentially a nasty pattern change that will be coming late September. We'll be looking to mosses and no. What this pattern change is going to be about is going to be about some troughs and that could be nasty. We'll look into some models. There could be some severe weather along with this and it could be pretty serious here if we could get a lot of cape which we do, it, that severe weather is going to be a little bit questionable here. So let's go ahead and get started with the models. We're going to start off with the GFS here. We'll look into the GFS and the Euro. At this point, the GFS has everything to look into, like the jet stream, the ingredients, all that stuff. Uh, the Euro is just about entering uh, with the weather in the planes here, but there's more days out ahead of that. So, right, uh, so there's trough number one. That doesn't really do much of anything except cross the west there. That kind of flies out. Here comes trough number two there. That's kind of a nasty trough right there. Could bring some severe weather across parts of the northern plains and upper Midwest there. That is Saturday, September 21st. Here, and that kind of flies out a little bit. Boy, look at this trough coming in. You're talking about, so we're high up in the atmosphere. So this is basically uh, jet stream territory here. So we're pretty high up in the atmosphere. Uh, 250 millibars. 180 knots across parts of British Columbia. Very strong winds. So you can see how nasty this trough is. It's just digging it in here. As it does so, low pressure does develop here with a very nasty cold front here. Out ahead of this is some uh, with some warm temperatures even. So dew points could be a little bit high. Haven't checked that out that yet. Now at this point here we got chance of severe weather going on here across parts of Texas. All the way up into Illinois here. We definitely got a lot of shear in place here. And as we continue on, it starts to stall a little bit. You now see severe weather threats been pushed a little bit further eastward here. And severe weather threat does continue to push eastward. Here comes a secondary trough coming in here. Uh, we're not going to be sure about that one there just yet. It's just this trough here could be a, a pretty good troublemaker here. And this is not too far out at this point. But it still technically is. Uh, so let's look at vorticity. So we're going to be going a little bit closer down to the surface here. Not quite close, but it's a little closer. So we're going to look into vorticity here at 500 millibars. So there goes trough number two there. Looks like it's got a weak cold front going on here. Should fizzle out a little bit. And this should be the next trough coming in right here. It's got a lot of vorticity going on with it. Oh yeah, there is a lot of vorticity here, especially, uh, looks like Tuesday of September 24th. Really got to pay attention to this here. That's pretty good severe weather setup. And it seems like that could continue on into Thursday. Um... Uh, from like Ohio down into Tennessee for Kentucky there, West Virginia, maybe even down to Georgia as well. There or even North Carolina there. Just looking into vorticity, see what the dew points are at this time. Uh, so this is the 18Z model run here. Zero C will come out this at midnight, but it's school night for me so I would not be able to take a look to zero Z model run. I'll see what the SPC says about uh, this system here. It is in there for the 8 day outlook. I think it's on day 8 I believe and they got potential too low at this time so uh, is this going to load or what? I'm having, there we go. So basically, um, I think the time where they're looking into it, it was not favorable at all. But now it is favorable. So it's kind of going back and forth here. 
So let's go ahead and kind of skip a few next days here. This is when low pressure really starts to deepen here. You talk about pretty sharp cutoff. You talk about dew points, very low. That's almost like fall type of weather right there. Then bam, you reach about 70. So there's a lot of moisture to deal with. It's kind of like a dry line, but it's actually just a cold front. So that's a very strong cold front coming in there. Low pressure at this point would be way up here. Six like um what we could have going on here, well, I've seen on precipitation, which I'll show you guys in a moment. That's a cluster of thunderstorms there. But it kind of looks like on here, that is probably a low pressure right there. And typically, when you have low pressure right here, it increases shear across this area right here. And that could produce some supercell development there. But we'll look into K values there in just a moment. That looks like another favorable day. You're talking about, dude, uh, well, it's a very sharp cutoff. Well, it's not a sharp cutoff, but it goes from 70 down to about 60. So not much of a sharp uh, cutoff than it was before. You can see there could be a flash flood threat potential for these areas here because some of these stores are going from southwest to northeast or even some coming from south to north here. For these areas, so there's probably more of flash flood threat than a severe weather threat. Um, this is September 26 here. Um, we'll look into shear in a different look. We'll take a look into that in just a moment. But this is a combination of cape and shear. That's a decent day right there. But we're not really too much worried about that. This is when it gets to the point where that low starts to deepen. And you can tell that's a decent day right there. Uh, let's take a look at that forecast um, uh, forecast sounding. What we got in this here, um, it's a weak tornado from this graph here. Um, now we got a cap going on here. We got a little bit of a decent cape value near the surface. We do have shear in place. That's enough shear. But I think at this time, cap it could be an issue. But we're going to back this up a little bit further because it seems like there's other areas like in Nebraska or Kansas there. Let's see if they show a different story. A little bit different here. You got higher cave shear, a little bit lower, but still favorable for supercells like you see here. But weak, severe hail could be in affected. Well, in effect. Uh, the capping is weaker there as well. So let's go down to this other spot here. Seems like the shear is a little bit weaker. But I think the cape could be a little bit higher. And yes, I am correct. And we actually do have no capping going on here. So when that happens, look at this here. Uh, you got severe hail definitely there as a threat. Super sales is a threat. Shear so a little bit lower again, but still enough for some supercells. We got a good cape value number. Torreo threat is possible, and when we look into this, it looks like there's a high chance for an EF0 and an EF1 there. But you got a low chance for an EF4 plus there. Uh, so we're going to keep an eye on that day. So let's continue on here. Doesn't seem that bad when it goes to this day right here. See, there's a cluster of thunderstorms in there out ahead of it. We'll look into those forecast soundings there. See what the show us. Um, uh, so this is a decent forecast sounding. Looks like we do not have much moisture in place, so there could be some dry air in, in that area. Uh, looks like hail is a threat, so if they for, for possibly a weak tornado. And the cape values are decent, so those stores may have a rough time there. And here's the next day here, so this could be a, another good day for severe weather. So we always got to go to the highest spot. And again, moisture seems like it's a little bit low 
except for near the surface low level moisture. Um, cape is pretty good. Shear is decent. Um, looks like we do have a chance for a supercell or some severe hail. Well, and or. Torrent threat looks to be low at this time. You can see here, it slows down about right here. So we may get a decent amount of rain there for our next, looks to be two to three days. So that's something you got to keep an eye on. So let's go ahead and get here. We even starting to see some mountain snow showing up. So this is September 23rd here. This is when that low starts to deepen. So it's at 196 millibars, which is a, it's a decent low pressure. We can also note there is actually some heavy haven. Uh, heavy mountain snow in Colorado there. See some darker blue in there. Seems like low pressure starts to not move that much, but that cold front starts to go a little bit out ahead of it. With these isobars here, these black lines here, it seems like it could be a little bit windy, severe winds here, so that moisture should start to try to kick in there. There's that squall one right there. Got to keep an eye on. Sometimes why well, find these strips here could mean supercells. That's something I learned from James Spam. Um, that's what kind of indicates there. But we'll see about that. You can see there are some strips down in Arkansas back into Texas. We'll keep an eye on that. Seems like it's a little bit more of a squall line for like Illinois, Missouri, Indiana. There. So that's September. That's in the morning of September 25th. So we go to the afternoon there. Try to get some supercells possibly from, say, about Ohio all the way back down to Alabama uh, there. Seems like that low pressure starts to weaken. So it seems like it starts to dissipate. But we still got this cold front here. It seems like it starts to become stationary there in and we'll look into those rainfall totals here. We'll see how much rain there could be. So what we got going on here, especially for this area here, could be potentially go up to 10 inches of rain for the next 312 hours. And we got some areas in here showing isolated amounts up to 6 inches of rain. So that's a decent amount of rain there. What's the euro side of this here? Well, seems like it's showing low pressure near Rapid City, South Dakota. Up in there. So this is Monday in the afternoon. You go to 8 o'clock. Seems like some thunderstorms try to show up here. Potentially some severe ones. Seems like low pressure didn't move south there. So kind of weeks low pressure there. But does indeed start to deepen. So this isn't very similar spots to what the GFS has put in. So they both have an agreement so far with this here. You can see some severe weather probably try to develop in Nebraska and even in Kansas there. We move on to Tuesday here. Uh, seems like some severe weather, morning severe weather across Iowa and Missouri, Nebraska, Kansas, and seems to be some isolated severe weather from Texas all the way up into uh, Nebraska. You see those snowflakes there? That's actually mountain snow. So let's take a look at those snowfall totals. Um, let's go it, up into near Denver from the Yarrow. Talk about nearly 20 inches of snow. It's quite a bit. See what the GFS predicts. Well, a little bit lower amounts here. Uh, yeah, pretty low at this time. Uh, let's see how intense this looks. You can see here the precipitation, it's a little bit more noticeable here. And that's a really good squall one there, I'm not going to lie to you. And with the winds here, we can have some gusty winds out ahead of it. So those are pretty good survey winds. We will go all the way back here near Nebraska, like North Plate, for example. I did not mean to get here. 
see wind gusting on the backs up to 50 miles per hour, so you can see some potential powder outages from that. You can see those rainfall totals again could be a little bit high from the GFS versus the Euro here. It does not go that far out quite yet. So let's move on to the West website, and this is Fintu Sky, not sponsored by them or anything. So this is where we see some of the severe weather ingredients here. You can see we got nice, strong, severe winds here, bringing in some pretty good K values there. Oklahoma City, 3300, Tulsa, 3100 there. So, so that's 5 o'clock there. See if there's any Cape and Shear involved. There is a, some of it. I've learned you need to be, uh, I believe, over a thousand to have to be into severe weather territory. There, that's definitely that's why I've heard a few months back. Wind shear looks to be very low. Let's look at to sign in here. Pretty much nothing. There's a good amount of lift. The Holissies there, so looks like the main threat at this point is damage to winds of large hail. Looking into this, Torrio Fred could stay low by looking into that. Let's go into Tuesday here. I talk about that cluster of thunderstorms right here. It seems like there could be another cluster here. And surrounding that, some decent K values, uh, valuing between one. 1300 up to 2500. Let's look at to Cape and Shear. So we actually do have some places a little over a thousand all over the place. You got decent value in Oklahoma, Texas, um, Illinois, Missouri, there, and even on Arkansas. They're showing some pretty good Cape Shear values. Let's look at to Wind Shear here. Pretty favorable wind shear. You need uh, over 20. Let's go down here. Very high wind shear values here. So probably best chance for supercells could be down here. Oklahoma and Texas. Arkansas up into Missouri and Illinois there. Pretty good wind shear there. Should bring in some nice cooler winds. And the sign-in looks to be no problem. Where you see those higher sign-in, that's from thunderstorms. So, out ahead of that, you can even tell there's thunderstorms here, here, and even here. Out ahead of it, we do have some uh, good values with lifting index here. That line looks to be between negative 5 to negative 8. I should say. Then Holistic, there is some areas that actually has pretty good Holistic values. I think you need over a hundred, which most people are here, especially way out ahead of it. Could see some severe weather as well. So probably a widespread event here, but probably lower chances out in here than it's actually in here. So let's go back to Cape. Let's go out to the 25th here. Oh, wait, that's right. Um, it only goes to 2 a.m. Let's see if severe weather threat stays overnight. Doesn't really look like it, but there is still wind shear in place, so. You can see the sign is starts to take over. And by the looks of it, seems like some of the storms are actually out in Indiana, Kentucky. The lift index should be much lower. Yes, it is. And the holistic is very high in that area. So what the precipitation does show, and there's their squall line right there. Let's go back out to Tuesday here. See, there's your squall line there. And it seems like it moves. At a pretty decent speed, and it seems like it starts to stall out a little bit here. So I'm not. So basically, uh, we'll see about tomorrow. We should see most of Wednesday on 
September 25th. I'll give you guys an update definitely tomorrow. And we'll see what the Store Prediction Center will say. So, yeah. Um, I think the last thing we should probably look into is temperatures here. Sorry if this is a long video. So here's your temperature difference here. See the effects from the cold front here. Uh, let's see here. So this is the 25th here. So we got 80s out ahead of it. And in those thunderstorms, it's talking about 60s. So talking about to a 20 a temperature change here, you can see. Very chilly temperatures there, and that's in the afternoon, so pretty big temperature change. You look, at, look at that, overnight lows over Colorado dropping below freezing there, so that's where you can see some snow. Uh, this here could go out a little bit further out, so we'll take a look into that. You can see snowfall totals talking about up to two feet. But I don't think I'm going to be buying that. That is 384 hours out. So, yeah, that's all good for guys today. Hope you enjoyed this uh, video. Uh, if you all did like this video, hit that like button. If you really do like my channel, hit the subscribe button. Hit that bell notification so you never miss an upload. If you all guys got any questions about this uh, upcutting pattern change, you can put it in the comment section down below. I'll answer you guys' questions. I'll see you guys in the next video.